Well, hey guys, thanks for joining me. Obviously, today I am not on the water, but that's because I have a special treat for you uh, that may very well turn into a, uh, an adventure. And I'm all about some adventure. A couple weeks ago, I was out on the Catawba River in Tiga K. Uh, this is a body of water that is extremely popular with tubers. And especially during the summertime, it's just tubing central. Anyways, I was out there during the week. There was nobody out there. I was fishing. They stopped running water at the dam, so the water level dropped really, really low. I was getting hung up on everything. So I went to the area where I kept getting hung up and found there was just a ton of trash and debris and all kinds of crap down there. So being the good Samaritan that I am, I started cleaning all that stuff up. I mean, I pulled out, there was some uh, paddles, two rod, rod and reels, like 300 miles of monofilament, just, just junk everywhere. However, something did catch my eye and I went out of my way to get it, pulled it up, it was none other than an iPhone that was in a dry bag. Now, the iPhone, the, the dry bag had given out, there was water in it. I don't really know, I, I have an iPhone, but mine's like an iPhone 4 or something, I don't know, it's super old. But the, the one that they pulled up, it looks like really, it looks like new, like new, new. Um, I did research on it, I think it's the iPhone 11, which is like the most recent one to come out. At the very least, it's 10 years newer than the one that I, <laughs> that I have. So anyways, I pulled up this iPhone. And uh, so now, here's, here's the dilemma that I have. Well, it's not even really a dilemma. It's just gonna be something fun to do. I, I took it home. Now, obviously, it was sitting at the bottom of the river for, I mean, who knows how long. It probably was down there for months. It was in a dry bag. Who knows how long that dry bag was actually good, but it was not, it, the dry bag had water in it, as stated before. But I took it home, and I, uh, it's been sitting in a bag of rice now for weeks, for absolute weeks. So now, I think that I'm, it's been killing me. I really wanted to see if it would actually charge back up, because that would be like a testament to, uh, to, to uh, the waterproof capabilities of the iPhone 11. But I haven't opened it yet. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug it in, number one, to see if it'll actually work. I mean, that'll be cool if it works. I imagine it'll be locked, so we won't be able to get into it, but maybe there'll be like a missed call or something on there, and maybe I can like, if there's a missed call, I can call the missed call and see if I can find who owns this. That's really what I wanna do. I wanna see if I can return this to the rightful owner. Um, I don't know if that's gonna be even feasible or possible. So let's, uh, Let's see if we can get this thing uh, charged up. All right, guys, here is the moment of truth. Are you excited? I'm excited. This is the phone. And, uh, um, I got a piece of rice stuck down in the charging port. <laughs> Hold on. All right, I had, I had to get the rice out of the charging port, but I got it out. So now, take two. Holy moly, look at that. Look at that. I think we're in business, guys. I think we're in business. Stay tuned. All right, guys, here is the actual moment of truth. I've let the, the phone has been charging. It's been on the charger for about an hour. Now, it said it was charging. Now, let's see if the thing actually comes on. Oh, look at that. You see that? It's got like some Husky, oops. It's got like a husky puppies. <laughs> That's cool. 
All right. Now, let's see if we can actually get this swipe. It doesn't even have a home button. Swipe to unlock. It says that I need a passcode, which I kind of figured I'd need a passcode, which I don't have. Um, like right now it is October, middle of October, and the date on this is Wednesday, June 10th. So uh, maybe that's, it's been down there for that long. Um, yeah, I'm pretty much dead in the water now because I don't have any way to unlock it and figure out who owns it. Um, let me... Let me do a quick Google search to see if I can find something. All right, guys, I've hit an impasse. Uh, what we have going on is, it says you can ask Siri for the owner, but because I guess the phone is disabled, I can't get the owner information because Siri has to be connected to the internet or the phone lines. So I'm going old school. I'm going to take a snapshot of the Huskies and post those on Facebook and Fishbrain and a couple other sites that are in the Fort Mill, Rock Hill, Charlotte area and uh, see if word of mouth can round up these husky owners. So that's where we stand. I'm going to give it a couple of weeks and see what happens. Guys, you're not going to believe this, but I posted that, uh, I posted a message on Facebook and made it shareable, just explaining the story that you know I had found this phone and all I had to go off of were the pictures of these Huskies. Just a shot in the dark. Not even an hour later, I get this message. So I get a message from a total stranger uh, with some a phone number and contact information for another total stranger who says that the phone is theirs, that they had lost it back in June, which aligns with uh, the date that is on the phone. Just to make sure, I mean, there's, there are a lot of scammers and stuff going on, but just to verify, I went to the, uh, the person who's claiming ownership. I went to their Facebook page. Look what I saw. I think we have the owner. Um, it's not super late right now, but I don't want to call. I mean, it's about 9.30 right now. I don't want to call anybody at, at this hour, but I'm going to call them tomorrow. I'm going to call this lady tomorrow and see if I can't uh, validate that it's her phone and uh, get her phone back to her. I mean, how this is a very cool story. Crazy how fast this thing happened. I mean, I, I can't believe that from the time I powered it up to the... And I had nothing to go on. I already have the owner in like less than an hour. I mean, that's just, that's insane. Absolutely insane. But stay tuned. All right, guys. I have the phone number in my phone. And I'm doing it in the car so I can put it on the speaker so you can, you can hear what the conversation is. I don't know why I'm like nervous. I shouldn't be nervous, but I'm kind of nervous though. Nervous excitement. Let's, uh... Let's see if we can uh, get this lady on the phone. This is I can't come to the phone, so leave me a message and I'll call you back. Hey, uh, my name is Joshua Myers. Uh, you don't know me, but I think I have your phone. The phone that has the two Huskies on it. Um, if you would, uh, I got—I know this is really odd. If you would give me a call back, if you're—if this is your phone. All right. That didn't work, but I—I I reached out. I left a voicemail. Balls in her court now. So we'll see what happens. Hold on. I think this is her calling. Hello. You just left me a message, possibly about my phone. Ah, uh, that's me. Uh, are you? Oh my goodness, this is so <laughs> crazy. I don't know. Um, 
if you're aware of that, but it's definitely my phone and I can prove it to you. Okay. <laughs> um, but I wanted to share something pretty neat kind of coming full circle. And first of all, thank you so much for not getting rid of that phone and giving up because I have pictures of my father on there who has recently passed, and I had no way to get those back. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It didn't back up to iCloud for some reason. We went on a rafting trip on my birthday, which was June 7th at the Catawba River, and I had it in a flotation thing. Um, And it fell out of our raft, and my friends and I all looked for it, but it had definitely moved on, and we couldn't find it. So I just thought it was lost, and I was kind of like, Broken hearted because I had those photos on there. And then yesterday, um, I teach first grade, and, and a parent sent me a message and she said, I don't think this would be yours, but did you lose your phone? And she sent me a picture of my two dogs, and I couldn't even like speak. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's mine. And like, I started sending her a text message. I'm like, that is mine. And she said that she belongs. To a mom's group in Charlotte and that somebody posted that on her mom's group. Then I teach her daughter right now. She's in my class and it just happens to be um, someone that I'm fairly close to because I've taught both of her children now. This is her second child. And she's like, she sent me this message and it was so weird. She, she sent the picture. I'm like, well, that's weird. Where did she get that from? And she said, I don't think you lost your phone, but that doesn't make sense because if you did, you wouldn't be able to respond to me, right? So I responded right away. I said, that actually is my phone. I'm like, I lost it back on June 7th. When did you find it? I, it was about a month ago that I found it. So and it's, it sat underwater for two, like three months almost, June, July, August, September. Well, wow, well, well when, I, when, I, when I powered it back on, um, you know, the, I guess the, the signal does, it's not receiving signal cause it's been canceled or whatever, but the date right. on the phone was June 10th. Isn't that insane? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I am so grateful though. I told her the story. I said, you know, most of it backed up to iCloud, but there are some pictures and videos that for whatever reason did not back up to iPod and they were of my dad. So I was so excited. I said, even if I can't get anything off there, if I can at least have those pictures it'll be worth it to me because obviously i got another phone i mean you have to um but that would be so amazing is there i like you have no idea how much i appreciate this is there a place in time that i could come meet you to pick it up oh, you're good. i can't believe that you were cleaning up trash and you found my phone this is just insane i mean really i don't really much believe in fate but i mean what is the odds of that happening i mean that's I, just I, not very high, not very likely, that's for sure. Like, even Otter, that, like, it just happens to be one of my students. Out of all the people I know in Charlotte, one of the kids that I'm teaching is from their mom. Okay, so tomorrow, and not that I, I mean, thank you for not selling it and not getting rid of it or discarding it, just because I do, I know that they're worth money and there's people out there that would buy it, but it does have important stuff on there to me, so I am really grateful that you at least took a chance, and then look what happened. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that. He's happy, too. He's <laughs> to you. He's saying thank you. <laughs> well, no, so, that, yeah, that's so cool. That's, that, that is a very, very cool story. And that, yeah, that's, that sounds good. I will, uh, I'll plan on meeting you out there uh, noon tomorrow. That sounds perfect. Thank you so much, Joshua. I can't wait to see you. All right. Good talking right. to you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Bye. Well. That's a uh, fun story there. Exciting news, guys. I, uh, it's about lunchtime. Just met up with the owner of the phone. As proof that it was, was her phone, she brought her dog, the Husky. Not both of them, just the one. But I could, I could tell. I could tell it was the same one from the picture. But, uh, yeah, so super cool lady. Very nice. Uh, was very appreciative of the, uh, the phone. Even, even cooler. Um, while we're there, she uh, typed in her, her keypad number or whatever, popped up, still has all of her pictures, all the pictures of, uh, it was funny, like she was scrolling through the pictures of the fateful day of her birthday trip down the river, you know, they're out there, you know, taking pictures on the water, um, 
had a bunch of birthday texts and stuff in there. So very, very cool. Ha who says there's no happy endings? I mean, that you talk about just the crazy coincidences that, that transpired just to make this thing happen. I was talking with one of my friends and she was like, you know, it's, the lady is very fortunate that you're the one that found it and that it didn't get sold or anything. I was like, well, even more than that, not only am I the one that found it and took the effort to try to find the owner, the fact that he was even found at all. I mean, let's not forget that thing was sitting at the bottom of a river for three months. So not just that was it found, that it still worked. And then it was like someone who just made a little bit of effort to, uh, to actually get it returned rather than just putting it on eBay. And then the likelihood that Facebook happened to know who this, this woman was. I mean, that's just, that's just a crazy story. I just, I just still, I'm just scratching my head about this, but good ending to a good story. I think we need more of these things nowadays, but, uh, I'm glad you came along for this adventure. I know this is kind of like a, you know, a tangential, uh, and this isn't fishing related. This was just a different, a totally different thing. I'm glad you stick stuck with me because I think it's a very awesome story and, uh, I'm glad you're here and while you're here, if you'd like to follow any more of the fishing stories or just stories in general, be sure to subscribe to the channel. This channel is updated every week with new fishing content and new fishing adventures. So I will be seeing you next week. This is Josh and this is Abide Fishing.